This is the handover for the Volkswagen Campus Calypso. We'll begin on the outside of the vehicle. Round just behind the driver's door, you have got your fresh water filler cap. So use one of these black round keys, insert in, twist, and then release the cap accordingly. Fresh water goes in. There's a drain tap underneath the van for draining it off for winter storage. We'll show you that later on. You've got a Truma uh, gas and electric water heater. When you're using the water heater on gas, you need to take this cover off so that the gas part of the unit can actually breathe. It secures back on like so. Word of advice, because there's no warning, um, there is a warning label, I should say, on the inside of the window. Make sure that this window stays shut if you're using the uh, water heater actually physically on gas. It stops some of the monoxide fumes from coming back up. If you're using it on electric, absolutely fine, not a problem. Further along the vehicle, you've got the little 12 volt uh, external socket. Sometimes, instead of just using a hose pipe from the tap, you can buy a submersible pump and the 12 volt part of it plugs into there and then you can then use the feeder pipe to go into the unit. You could buy another 12 volt plug if you maybe wanted to use it for um, a tire inflator, for example. Mains cable plugs into the side. Now when you connect into the main supply, always connect to the side of your vehicle first of all and then connect to the power supply that you're gonna be using. Um, vice versa when you want to come to disconnect. Right at the very back, you've got your toilet cassette. Now, the toilet cassette comes in two parts. At the top, you've got your flush water reservoir. So you take the cap off and using a watering can, I would pre-mix um, about a teacup full or the measuring cup on the, on the base unit full of pink solution into about six or seven liters of fresh water. Slowly pour it in, and as you are pouring it in, you'll see this sight tube slowly fill up along the right-hand side. Winter time, you'll want to drain it down, so you can just release what's in the sort of the U-bend at the top just by taking the yellow cap off, and then you can pull down on the sight tube very carefully I'll keep my thumb over it so we don't spill it out all over the place. But obviously take your thumb away and you'll then allow you to then drain down the reservoir for the flush water. Push it back up like so. For the cassette, push down on the yellow flap. Now if you feel any resistance, double check, make sure that the slide is shut on the toilet bowl inside. It should come out nice and easily. On a campsite, you have collection points for these to go into. So the yellow cap comes off the top completely. Tip the whole thing up, press the yellow button in, and let the grey water, waste water out the bottom. Before you load it back in, take your cap off, use the measuring cup in the top, up to a cap full. We would recommend the green for the Highlands, uh, mixed with about two litres of water. And then slide the whole thing back in, ready for use. Just under the skirt behind the rear wheel, you've got your grey water outlet. So this is going to enable you to drain down the water from your shower tray, from your vanity unit, and from your kitchen sink. At the back of the vehicle, you've got a lockable flap. Behind that flap is your spare wheel location. There's a toolkit underneath the driver's seat to enable you to use it. You've also got wind down legs at the back. Now these are there to stabilize the vehicle. So when you're getting in and out of it, it stops it from rocking around. Do not use these caravan style to actually elevate or jack up the vehicle. They're not sufficiently strong enough. So round onto the passenger side. First of all, you've got now your fresh water drain valve. So again, for winter storage, um, you would open up that valve um, to allow the content of the fresh water tank to drain out. And then adjacent to that, you've got your gas locker. So you've got your gas bottle installed in here. Always turn on and turn off the gas supply at the top on the brass nut. Turn it off in transit uh, by turning it clockwise, turn it anti-clockwise to open the valve to allow the gas flow to come into the vehicle for use. Fuel filler cap. Outer flap's not affected uh, by a locking system, but you have got a cap. So ignition key in, turn the whole lock over 
180 degrees and then unscrew the cap to fill it up with diesel and then vice versa back in wind the cap on until it will turn no more and then turn the key back 380 and it should lock it into position like so to get under the bonnet of the vehicle you've got a bonnet release at the top of the passenger footwell so pull back firmly on that lever When you do that, it exposes a little red tag just above the Volkswagen badge. So push in on that one, and that should enable you to open it up. Bonnet stay up, and then your screen wash, power steering fluid, oil filler, oil dipstick, brake fluid, and your radiator water all there, and then the engine battery over on the right-hand side underneath the filter intake. When you open up the habitation door, there's a fly screen. So you can separate it, it's on a couple of little magnetic strips, slide it over, there's a little peg just behind and you can slide it in so that it locks into position and gives you your fly screen. Pull back and it will stick back on, extra little clip there to stop it from being pulled. When you get just inside the caravan door, the switch which is nearest the door is for an awning light and then you've got a little footwell light down at the bottom. When you come into the van on the end of the wardrobe, you've got your 12 volt control panel. So over on the left hand side, you've got a single rocker switch, which goes upwards so you can access the engine battery or downwards so you can access the leisure battery. It's always gonna be the leisure battery that you want to use. Green light indicates that the battery is in good condition. Whilst you're in use and just on 12 volt, you might see it start to fade towards the red, indicating that it needs a charge. It's a separate switch. For the water pumps, you use that when you're going to be using um, things like the shower or washing up. But I would use it on demand, nighttime, switch it off. If you're going out for the day, switch it off. Below that, main switch for your interior 12 volt lights. And then auxiliary one and auxiliary two, they are things like the igniter for the fridge, the igniter for the hob. Um, and if there's a television aerial, for example, fitted, you'll have the power coming from there. Behind this little plastic cover, just prise it open with your fingernail, um, are four fuses and they tie into those four switches there. They're little 10 amp, 32 mil glass fuses. Above the control, you've got your water level indicator. When you fill up on this one, press the reed gauge and you'll see the needle rise up. If you've completely filled the system, so you've hurled water sort of coming out from back out from the nozzle, you may find that you need to recalibrate these so just keep your finger on the top button and then just give it a little twiddle until you find this needle reading at the full point. Um, and that will give you a more accurate reading through the duration of the tank. When you open the wardrobe door over on the left hand side, you've got a large white box, which is your mains uh, RCD box. With the switches all in the upright position, that allows your main supply to come in. Over on the extreme right hand side, you've got the main switch and then there's a little test button above. So if you're testing the main supply, push in on that one, it should trip out indicating that you've got main supply coming into the van. Lift it back up and turns it back on. To the left of those, you've got your individual switches and then there's a single switch. That's the electric element switch for the room heater. We'll talk about that later on. And if you take the floor panel out, underneath the floor panel is a little black box and that's your battery charger. So all the time that you're connected to the main supply is trickle charging your leisure battery. When you go under the driver's side bunk, you will first of all come across this red boxed cover. Um, that's your leisure battery. Alongside that, you've got your water pump and then the water heater itself. These water heaters have a drain valve on them for winter storage. So in these colder climates, when you're not using the van, it's advisable to lift this tab to the vertical position so that the content of the water heater can drain out. Turn on your taps at the uh, kitchen and the vanity unit, um, especially on the hot side, so that you can allow the free flow of the water system all the way out and leave them open uh, whilst the van is not in use. To recommission it, Put it back in the horizontal position, doesn't matter which direction, just as long as it's horizontal to the floor. You'll then turn on your hot water taps and you draw the water back through the system. So when you get a consistent flow of cold water coming out of your hot taps, you're ready to start heating up the water heater. 
If you're gonna heat the water up on mains electric, you'll be connected to the main supply. You turn on this rocker switch and in around about 40 minutes or so, it'll heat the water up to around about 60 degrees, high enough to kill off any bacteria that's in, within the system. If, however, you're gonna use the water heater on gas, then with the 12 volt supply switched on, just make sure the cover has been removed as the label suggests. Push up on the on switch and you should see a little green light come on. You may well hear a click from underneath the bed box um, as the gas burner lights. If it ignites okay, you'll see a green light stay on there. If it fails to ignite because the gas flow is not coming through, perhaps because you've left the cover on the outside, you'll see a little red light accompanying it up there. Same sort of period of time to heat up. If you're urgent to heat the water up, then you will um, you can use the, both the electric and the gas systems together. Because we've left the cover on outside, there's your warning light telling you that there's a problem. The room heating in this van is both gas and electric. So for the gas fire, turn it round from zero all the way around to maximum. Push down on the thermostat, strike the piezo igniter a couple of times. And if you hold your head about 45 degrees to the slot at the front, you will find that you'll see a flame within the flame chamber indicating that it's lit. For the electric room heating system, you need to remember to turn on that little beige switch in the wardrobe, first of all then turn on your control and you've got a choice of settings and this is going to be subject to the amount of amperage that's available for you to use on a campsite. So they're roughly two, four and eight amps respectively. Um, some sites might limit to you to how much you can actually use. So choose wisely before you turn the system actually on and then a centigrade thermostat for the control just below. So we're into the area of the cooker and there's a couple of things that you need to be aware of. First of all, under the cooker, and it can easily get knocked by pans if you're using it for storage, there's an electrical switch. It's illuminated now. It's the master switch for the fridge. So if the fridge is on mains and something knocks against it, you may well find that the fridge will switch itself off. Adjacent to that, you've got three um, individual isolator taps and these are the gas feeds through for the hob, for the fridge and for the cooker. In line, they are on. If they're rotated through 90 degrees, that will isolate the supply. You'll notice when you open up the locker door at the base that there's a funny little uh, metal bar sticking out. This has an important use. When the door is shut, there are a couple of magnets, um, but Compass found out quite early on in the design of this vehicle that those magnets sometimes weren't strong enough. So always make sure that the little metal catch is turned back over the glass door. And that way, if you do go over a bump, it stops the door from falling forward and ultimately smashing the glass section. For the main hob, you've got an electronic igniter. So choose a gas burner, especially if you just changed over a gas bottle and fire up your gas accordingly. And you see the gas flow come through. It's worthwhile going round all the burners when you first change over the gas bottle to make sure you've got that continuity supply. However, there's no isolators on these lids. So if this falls down over the hot uh, plate or if it falls down actually onto the flame, it will likely explode the glass. So make sure everything's sufficiently cooled. The middle knob is there for the grill. Make sure you remove any flammable material first of all. And you should then be able to light the grill. And then finally, the other side door opening. Turn it around to the maximum position and fire away. So the fridge in this van is a three-way fridge. Um, therefore, you can operate it in three different ways. Most popular for most is to use it on the mains. So you need to make sure the van is as near level as possible. You'll use leveling wedges perhaps underneath the road wheels and a spirit level on a flat surface um, and it will operate to its best efficiency. Green light goes on. Don't forget this is tied into the switch which is underneath the cooker. Adjust your thermostat accordingly and the fridge will start to cool down. Maybe charge it up overnight. So park the van on a level piece of driveway before you depart, uh, cool the fridge down overnight um, and then you'll be ready for departure. When you're traveling down the road, there's no option for you to be connected to the mains, so you put it into the 12 volt mode. This switch will illuminate when the ignition is running. It's taking a direct feed from the alternator and it will maintain the temperature within the fridge. 
if you set off from home with the fridge uh, warm and dry and just put it onto 12 volt, it's unlikely that it's going to have any chilling effect uh, whilst you're en route. If you arrive on site and there's no mains hookup available, you're stopping in a lay-by or wild camping for example, then you have the option of using this on gas. So electronic igniter flashing away merrily over on the right hand side, pushing on the thermostat like you do with the cookers, hold it in for a couple of seconds and that flame should stop flashing. When you open up the fridge door um, you should see a little pilot light um, in the back left hand side and then you've got a thermostat control again the higher the number the bigger the flame the colder the fridge will become. Don't use the gas and the mains together to try and cool the fridge down it actually has um, a thermal effect and it actually ends up cancelling out the process so either cool the fridge down on gas or cool the fridge down on mains. Everybody gets caught out on these little fridge latches. So the tab goes down, it stops the door from opening. Push your finger in on the green tab. I say it as sort of a kind of like a diagonal position and you should find that it should release and come up. There are two hole positions on here. The outermost obviously keeps the door shut, but if you're wanting to ventilate or store the fridge, then put the tab down on the innermost latch and it will give you just a finger gap for it to breathe. So when you come into the bathroom, you've got a tip up sink. So pull the little tab around so that you can drop the sink down gently. Swivel the tap round, and when you turn the tap supply on, you should see a straight jet coming through. And obviously let your water coming through. To mix the tap, so you've got hot and cold water, ready for use. Gently tip the sink up, and it will then drain into a waste behind. If you've got a very full sink, tip it slowly, don't slam it up because you'll just end up with water going everywhere. When you want to use it as a shower you'll need to pull the sink head up and when you turn it on if you swivel the base plate it goes to a stop position to conserve water and then if you continue on round it will then go into a shower head mode like so. Winter storage physically unscrew the head because what can happen is water is stored within these units and as I'll now demonstrate quite a bit of water and it causes these seams to split and these are quite expensive to replace. So screw it back on again and just to complete the storage process I would keep it in the hung position up on the bracket make sure that with the pump switched off that you've left your interior taps open and it should drain down nice and freely. So with the toilet cassette, seat up. Open up the lever on the left hand side and it opens up the wastegate in the bottom of the bowl. Let your waste go straight through and then it's an electric flush. This flush works in conjunction with the pump switch. So you'll see some pink rinse water going around the inside the bowl. Use as much or as little as you feel that you need to do so. And then close over afterwards. As the cassette slowly fills up, this gauge tips over from green towards red. First time round, I probably let it get half full just so that you can gauge the weight because when they are completely full, they are quite heavy. So you've got a plastic uh, MPK roof light in the top. Pull the fly screen down very carefully. To open it, push in on the brown section and you should be able to push the roof light up. They're multi-directional so you can tip them into or out of airflow. But for traveling, you do need to be locked down securely when you're on the road and then just put your fly screen back in, just make sure the little tabs sit behind the box from coming in. The line comes across and you can lock it into position for nighttime mode. All of your side windows and the rear kitchen window all open in the same way. So you've got a latch which you need to undo around the frame and then when you push them out there are little screw tops at the tops of the stays to hold the window and keep it in secured position on both sides like so. Undo those taps. Just before the window is fully closed for ventilation reasons only don't ever do this when you're traveling you can leave it on a stop gap position it just gives you an air gap there otherwise fully close it for setting off down the road. Your blinds and fly screens, 
Fly screen comes there all the way down to the base, and there's a couple of little lock runners on either end. The blind sometimes has different marking positions that you can set them into. So a third, two thirds, and fully closed at the bottom. So we're moving to the cab of the vehicle, and the first thing that I want to show you is how you obtain reverse on these vehicles, because on these old T4s, it's a little bit different. So take the stalk, pull it over, and then pull it right back for reverse. Otherwise, for the rest of the gears, it's just a way for you for first, back for second, third, and fourth, you can normally do on your fingertip without putting any pressure on, and then over and forward for fifth. Central cab controls, you've got your temperature, your speed, and your direction of your fan with a recirculation button underneath. Stereo, you can use independently of the ignition, um, but it will run from the, your engine battery and you've got stereo settings and an old-fashioned cassette player. There's no heated rear window function on here because it's a plastic window on the back, and your hazard light switch is just a bit above. Right over on the right-hand side, you have got your light controls. So off is over on the left-hand side of the bezel, center for your side lights, and then for your dipped headlights, and then you use the left-hand stalk for the main beam. To get to your fog light, you pull out on the switch and that activates the rear fog light. There's a little bezel next door for the instrument binnacle brightness and then your wiper controls down for intermittent, middle off and then up for first and second speed and back for the rinse and then your normal indicator controls are down there on the left and right on that side. So that concludes the handover for your Volkswagen Calypso. Sincerely hope that the van's going to give you lots of miles and lots of smiles. But if you do need to get in contact with us, please do by email, by phone. On behalf of Van and Camper Vans, thank you.